A good gift is one that is nice, thoughtful, and handmade. And I would like to accomplish that with this right here. I'm going to be putting a handle on this blade for Sarah for her birthday. This is, of course, a knife blank and not a custom, but it will still be pretty nice, I'm thinking. Uh, so we're going to start with Jasper. I'm going to be using this picture Jasper here for the knife handles. And uh, this is something I have a little bit of experience with, so yeah, I can do this. So we're doing a little bit of layout, some tracing of the handle of this kitchen knife, which is a stainless uh, stainless steel, kind of like 440. Uh, it's a, a slightly different, but we're going to be trying to capture some of this picture here that you can see. I think it's going to look really, really nice uh, as, as handle material. It's just, it's, it's very picturesque. <laughs> I'm going to fire up the trim saw here. I've, I've been really satisfied with this as a, as a trim saw. This lower tone TS-10C is doing quite well out here in the shop. I'm going to try to trim it pretty close to the edge, not all the way. You know, you get too close to the edge with a, a trim saw and you run the risk of potential breakout, which that's definitely not something we want here. Pretty close. Uh, the grinding wheel will take that down nicely. I'm going to cut some pin stock here so that we can pin those handles to the knife. That makes for the best connection. So I'm using some stainless steel pins here. Just got to file them down so that we can put it through. So the pin stock here is 3 sixteenths of an inch and it does uh, kind of fit through the tang of the knife. There's a little bit of wiggle, but that's fine. This should, shouldn't matter at all. However, however, one of the problems that I have is, well, these are 4.7 millimeters and the core drill, which I intend to use on drilling these holes in the, in the Jasper, is five it's five so we got some uh imperial and some metric so we're gonna try this on some scrap here before having at it on the actual slabs there's got to be a better way of drilling these kinds of holes here so i'm just using my drill press and you know water with a little block of wood as a backer and i'm just giving it a go you know i've never actually had the need to drill any kind of holes in any rocks. So this is a, you're witnessing my first time drilling a hole in a rock. That had some blowout coming out of the back. Now, typically you could face that towards the inside of the tang and that wouldn't be much of a problem, but it's definitely too, too wiggly, uh, too wiggly. So I got to figure out a better way of drilling holes in rocks. So in lieu of that, we're going to skip the pins, put a pin in that as a concept, and I'll come back to it at a later date. In the meantime, we're going to start grinding uh, I guess you'd call it the bolster. I think it's the bolster area. It's uh, kind of the front of the handle that would face the blade because you can't really get at it once it's epoxied on. And we're using the centered wheels here. I have an 80 on the left and a 220 on the right. And centered wheels are absolutely amazing. They make short work of uh, pretty much anything. You can kind of see a little mock up here of the way that's going to look. I think it's going to look uh, really good. Kind of fill the hand. And you can see there that we kind of did a little bit of profiling on it. This was frustrating to say the least. So epoxying these up, I should have done one side at a time. Instead, I tried to do both sides and it kind of created a slippery sandwich effect. Now, typically you would have the 
pins that can kind of align both sides and keep everything in place while you clamp it up. And obviously I didn't have that. I'm not using pins. I'm just using the epoxy. So it was a lot of fussing, a lot of back and forth kind of being trying to adjust it. Things would slip. I kept having to go back and forth and uh, mess around with it. Not recommended. There's got to be an easier way to, to do this. Cleaning up a little bit of residual there with uh, some acetone. You don't have to do this step, but I had all this epoxy on the outside of the handle. So I just took it over to the belt sander, which is great for this. You know, it gives a lot of room to be able to work around the well, a larger, larger item like this. There's no other wheels in the way like you would maybe have with a six wheeled machine. I'm gonna grind those slab handles down to the tang of the knife. We're just gonna work that down so that we can get our, well, the, the, the base profile. And once again, that 80 grit centered just uh, takes it down real, real quick. Very nice. The fitment is good. I wanna do, kind of some facets on it. So it'll be a little bit like an extended octagon, I guess. It should feel really nice in the hand. And since this is meant to be a kitchen knife and a user, we want it to feel good in the hand and have lots of grip. I'm just doing that profile down to the lines and uh, keep checking back and forth, back and forth. This took a little bit. Uh, I want, just wanted to do the 220 wheel there and then off to the belt sander. The belt sander is great for this, you know, lots of options. Pretty close. I went up through my grits and I think uh, I'm very happy with the belt sander doing this right there. It looked like I almost touched the blade, but I didn't. <laughs> Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this came out as a project. I just took it up to about a thousand grit so that we can kind of maintain some grippiness to it. I like how the, the flats kind of came out on it. Now, it has been approximately 10 years since I've put a handle on a knife. I used to make knives and uh, I mostly worked with G10, some micarta as well. I'm very happy with how these came out. I think uh, the epoxy without the pins will turn out just fine. And uh, all we got to do is see if uh, Sarah likes it. In the meantime, um, it's, it's very sharp. Very sharp. And uh, I will clean it and sharpen it. And uh, hopefully, hopefully she enjoys it. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I um, hope, uh, hope you liked it.